Thank you very much for your time here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, you know, it's interesting, I was reading the origins of the company AB InBev all the way back to the 13th, 14th century. I mean, so, you know, you've had quite the history of being a beer maker and in India for 20 plus years. Um, I know it's hard to do, but if you could encapsulate that journey uh, in a few lines. Well, it's, it's an incredible uh, legacy for any company to have. Uh, I mean, if you think about the things from history lessons on what was happening in the world in the 13th century, yeah. I mean, it's mind boggling to think that we have breweries, we have brands that have been around for the better part of this period. That have been brought into AB InBev's fold over that all of these really years. That have been the starting bricks yeah. that allowed for AB InBev to become the company that it is. So we're, we're extremely proud of the legacy of brands that we have. Hmm. I think it really instills in all of us uh, a sense of, you know, humility about the company that we've built but also the company that we plan uh, to, to build from here on onwards. And that's where India comes in. India is very much one of the youngest business units within ABI, but one which holds out the maximum promise when you think about the next 25 odd years. Hmm. Uh, and I think there's growing consensus within ABI, not just about India, the country, yeah. but the business that we're building here in India. So I think it's, uh, it's a coming together of stars that our global CEO calls the perfect balance between volatility and vitality. So India has always been a volatile place, but now it's got this unique vitality about it that makes the proposition even more exciting. So how vital is it then to the company? We understand it's your fourth largest market globally, um, one of the top four for Budweiser as a brand. Uh, but you know, given the kind of investments the company has been making, give us a sense of where India stands uh, versus the rest of the world in the larger scheme of things for AB InBev. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're, I think, a testament to the idea of what focus and consistency can do for a business. Hmm. Uh, we came in in 2007 as AB InBev uh, with this beautiful proposition, which hmm. is Budweiser. If you grew up uh, in the late 90s, you know, you, you took in Budweiser more as a pop culture phenomena. You know, we looked at the advertising, we looked at what Tom Cruise was doing in Top Gun back in the day when he was doing Great Balls of Fire. We looked at Jim Morrison holding a Budweiser in a concert. And that proposition from the time we've launched it in India has been about keeping this idea of building a premium segment, which did not exist back in 2007, but also the consistency of how we wanted to build Budweiser, which is by becoming uh, the icon of premium, by becoming the icon of culture, and introducing to India you know, the latest and greatest from the world of music, from sports. Mm. Uh, Budweiser has been associated with the FIFA World Cup for as long as I can remember. But also what we've been able to do to change the music landscape by bringing this unique voice that Bud has. I think today is a testament of us being in the top five. We're hungry for more. Uh, we do see India having the, prop, you know, the potential. Hmm. Uh, I wouldn't want to get ahead of myself, but uh, I do think before the end of this decade, yeah. uh, we can see Budweiser being a far more bigger brand in India. Hmm. And by that very yardstick, taking India up the ranks, you know, who knows? The, in the top next country, 20 years, maybe? The top country as well. We've seen that happen with a few other multinational brands in India. Hmm. Uh, but I think Budweiser has also weaved itself quite intrinsically into the hmm. local fabric of Indian culture. Uh, so we're excited. But equally what we've been able to do is build a portfolio of brands around Budweiser. Hmm. So you think Corona, you think Who Garden, and I think these with their own unique propositions, Corona just being an absolute favorite for people, not just when you're at the beach, yeah. but also when you're thinking about disconnection. And I think for us, the uh, the real surprise package has been Who Garden, and I know wheat beer, with the advent of brew pubs and everything, was always going to be something of a slow burn. But mm. the excitement people have from the time we've launched Who Garden flavors, mm. Who Garden rosé, and Who Garden nectarine, I think instills in us a lot of confidence that we've got mm. uh, this beautiful trio of brands in Budweiser, Corona, and Who Garden that can really shape the next 10 years for us. Uh, you know, we'll get back to this brand building because it's quite interesting for an mm -hmm. alcohol company with the restrictions that you have. But I know you don't share India numbers per se, mm -hmm. uh, but if you could give us a sense of how growth has been for the India market in terms of revenues, in terms of cases that you're selling, mm -hmm. uh, and how it compares to the industry growth for, uh, you know, premium brands in India. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the, the thumb rule we're quite proud of. Mm -hmm. At any point, AB InBev wants to be two times the growth of the industry. So okay. we're talking about mid to high single digits. I'm going to aggregate at an all India level, but uh, with alcohol being a state to state subject, hmm. sometimes you have a single source of truth and sometimes you have to rely just on a triangulation of estimates, some government data released and our own sales estimates. But I think if you put the industry at high single digits, uh, we're quite proud that for the better part of this year, 
we're actually growing two times that uh, with closer to 21-22% growth. Okay. Uh, in some markets, we're actually very high double digits. In some other markets, we're moderately ahead of industry, but if you aggregate our, our total business, uh, we're growing. Uh, but most importantly, we're growing in a manner that is consistent. As I said, with the focus of our portfolio, we're focused on wanting to be the leaders of premium hmm. that also grow the premium category in India hmm. and not just be leaders of a small pie. Uh, and I think our agenda on that front, uh, we seem to be quite satisfied, hmm. uh, but still very hungry. So 24 for us is going to be about a year that outpaces whatever we did in 23. Well, we hope that is the case. But, you know, uh, the last couple of years for the country, for uh, several industries and uh, the beer market is specifically, it's been hard with the pandemic. But we're now kind of over that hump. Um, has business volume, has it returned back to what you saw, uh, you know, before the pandemic hit? I, I, I would be a little conservative in saying mostly hmm. uh, because we still have markets that aren't quite fully back. And I think the two that stand out for us that, equally concern us. Uh, one, of course, is Maharashtra. Mm. Uh, it's one of the biggest beer states, but I think uh, with the continued increase in duties, particularly on beer, yeah. uh, uh, your familiarity with Maharashtra and Mumbai in particular, uh, it is one of the most expensive states in India to go get beer. Yeah. Uh, it's just incredible uh, how much money people need to shell out to get a bottle of beer. Ironically, it's also now becoming one of the more affordable states when it comes to heart spirits. Hmm. So products that are about 48% with the import duty cut yeah. on anything coming in, uh, particularly in the state of Maharashtra. So that's been a state which has been, I think for us, a little disappointing. Uh, we're of course engaging with the government, we're engaging with the relevant authorities hmm. to try to see how a beverage of the kind of moderation that beer brings between 4 to 8% should be a lot more affordable than somebody going and, and you know opting for a glass of whiskey. Yeah. Got nothing against whiskey. We just don't <laughs> think it makes you sense. You just pour it into that segment. Yeah, very specific <laughs> segment, but we just don't think it should cost, you know, two times more to buy a bottle of beer in equal volume terms mm -hmm. than it should on a spirit that contains forty eight percent alcohol. The other state of prominence for us that has been disappointing has been Goa. You would imagine with, you know, that's a surprise. Revenge tourism and revenge consumption. You would think that people going to Goa yeah. uh, would bring the industry back. Uh, but again, disappointingly enough, there have been you know, more headwinds than we would have liked to see. Uh, the closure of all nightlife after 10 p.m. You're not allowed to have music out yeah. there. Uh, you know what Goa means to a lot of Indians. It's the place you go to disconnect. Uh, but equally, I think, again, this idea of milking the alcohol segment beer in particular by increasing duties uh, I think kind of takes a little bit of the sting out of what should have been a very sharp recovery post COVID. So these are the two states uh, that concern us a little bit but we're engaging with the authorities. So Maharashtra and Goa but you know you spoke of some of the challenges with mm -hmm. taxation for instance because the way our taxes are structured mm -hmm. it's not on the basis of the content of alcohol but mm -hmm. more on the volume. Mm -hmm. uh, you know is, is that the bigger challenge or you know why do you think that it is that a company a country like India mm -hmm. with the demographic uh, you know advantage that we have mm -hmm. with the weather conditions that we have yeah. which would be a natural market for beer to sell oh, you uh, yeah. is, is not the case here right I mean no. we still prefer our hard liquor over beer. Yeah, so, you know, we, we, we could theorize this 10 ways to Sunday, uh, and, <laughs> and I can assure you we'll come with some very compelling theories, but I think at the, at the heart of it is uh, an abject lack of awareness. I think for a very long time, the bureaucrats who actually craft the policy don't quite differentiate between beer and heart spirits. For them, depending on their own sort of, you know, association uh, with this particular category, hmm. we tend to unfavorably get coupled with a product that may have 48% alcohol versus 4% alcohol. Hmm. Every time we engage and drive uh, the relevant level of education, we find bureaucrats responding extremely positively, a case in point being West Bengal. Hmm. For a very long period of time, you know, we're talking almost two cycles or two years, uh, our corporate affairs teams would be in and out of the excise uh, officer's cabin, engaging with other stakeholders, really driving awareness. Hmm. Uh, and the result of that is the government's willingness to consider making taxes on beer lower than spirits. Hmm. Remarkably, quite to the you know, popular opinion that may have felt that spirits is good for the state exchequer because revenue and tax contributions are different, not only did we see a significant uptick in consumers drinking more moderate beverages, hmm. the beer industry grew close to 90%, hmm. but the tax revenues that the state saw grew by 40%. 
and this for us was a big breaking of a myth. Thanks to the, the share growth, volume growth. Uh, well, the volume growth, but also the revenue growth. AB InBev in particular is a is you know disproportionately inclined towards premium brands. Mm -hmm. Our revenues and contributing taxes. I mean, we pay five hundred million dollars in taxes yeah. across India. Uh, I think did break a little bit of a prevailing notion hmm. that you know if you have to opt for alcohol, you'd rather opt for hard spirits. Hmm. You know, put in structures that limit the sale of beer, make spirits more accessible, relatively speaking. Uh, and I think the West Bengal case has shown us that that is not the case. So we're we're uh, fairly persistent people. Uh, and well, we don't give up easily. So we're going to continue to be in and out of people's offices, driving awareness, <laughs> driving education, that India should be beer country and not hard spirits country. You have your first craft beer that you launched recently, Seven Indeed. Rivers. Yes. Uh, you know, but how do you assess that segment of the market? Because typically it's been harder to scale. Mm -hmm. It's been more expensive to produce. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you look to further yeah. expand that? Uh, what we're trying to do over here is lead the category, but lead it responsibly. We don't think India is at this point a place where overnight you're going to have everybody switching to wheat beer or ales. Sure. Uh, but we do think planting seeds, giving people more experiences, building novelty around the category, uh, you know, decoding certain palate limitations. Uh, we find women at times finding beer in some occasions to not quite fit. Uh, what they'd really like to endorse for that evening. Um, and we found that with Hoogarden and Hoogarden flavors in particular, rosé and nectarine, we could actually overcome those barriers. So I think we're going to phase this as we see and uh, you know, understand the category evolution in many other markets. We do have a lot of knowledge from many of our bigger markets and we hope to tap into that mm -hmm. as we think about stewarding this category towards what we think is its destiny, but which is to be the biggest alcohol category. Do you think it can be that in India, given the inherent problems with it? Well, I I think, we've seen some of the largest players yeah. in this segment, for instance, not do so well. And they, they've been around yeah. for a while. I mean, the likes of Bira, for instance, still struggling to, you know, sort of turn profitable. Yeah, I mean, this, this, is, a, this is a complex business. Mm. Uh, it's a very expensive business, I must add. Yeah. Uh, and it's a business that you need a commitment uh, to, to be with. Uh, from the 13th century hmm. uh, and if you're looking at wanting to be uh, an overnight operator hmm. and you want to cash out at some point hmm. I think this is not the category you'll ever walk away from with a smile on your face hmm. I think this category requires patience I think it requires persistence and uh, we we're not the overnight operators we're committed to the idea hmm. that we think bear as a category in India is almost a match made in heaven when you think about uh, the demographic advantage I spoke to when I think about, you know, everything you said, the tropical climate. Yeah. You're going to be crazy to think you land in India and people are going, let's go have a whiskey at <laughs> two in the afternoon. You know, 48% alcohol, <laughs> it's 42 degrees outside, maybe at times 48 degrees outside. It's crazy. You know, on mm. the other hand, you have a cold, moderate beverage that allows you to enjoy the occasion sure. of socializing. So, you know, that's our view. We do think at some point, craft will also become exciting, but we're being very patient in developing it the right way. Well, no matter how conducive an environment it may be for uh -huh. beer, you've also felt the need that, you know, the consumption in India for spirits is far higher. In fact, it's, it dominates the market and therefore you're beyond beer category mm -hmm. in your project there. Tell us about that. I mean, what are your plans? You pour it into whiskey, you mm -hmm. have your Hogarden gin, you have your vodkas, etc. How large a part of business is this going to be? Yeah, so a simplistic, uh, an oversimplistic take out on our commercial moves seemingly may suggest that it's more about spirits mm. uh, in India and that's why we're sort of expanding our portfolio. Mm. Uh, this could not be farther from the truth. Uh, the reality is the kind of brands we built here with Budweiser, you know, as an example over the last 15 odd years, always involved listening to consumers and being able to understand what are the other occasions in the consumer's life that we think the relevance of this brand with the kind of equities it's developed. It's a brand for young people. It's a high quality brand. It's a brand that brings you experiences uh, that make you feel part and parcel of popular culture. But it was always about you know, liquid superiority, getting the liquid right. We're quite confident with blind tests. Mm. We think we've got the best energy drink out there. Uh, but again, we're, we're wanting to learn. We're wanting to understand how we can be part of consumers' lives in a more meaningful and a more relevant way. Okay, on that note, we have to take a break, but don't go anywhere. We're back in Egypt.